Hello, my name is Namsen, and I'm a postdoc from Lund University in Sweden. My talk is about the general trends of bimetallic nanoparticle structures that we investigated using molecular dynamics. Bimetallic nanoparticles are interesting because we have more degrees of freedom in changing the shape or size or structure for optimizing their properties. The motivation of this work was that we wanted to find the equilibrium structures of bimetallic nanoparticles, whether a certain combination forms a mixed structure or a coercial structure or something else. And secondly, we wanted to find out why they form a certain structure. We basically wanted to know the rules so that we can predict the results. In order to answer these questions, we used molecular dynamics for 45 different bimetallic combinations composed of these 10 metals. As we were interested in the equilibrium structures, we started the MD simulations from bimetallic liquid drop at high enough temperatures and cooled it down to the room temperature. And to make sure it reaches the equilibrium state, we continued the simulations with Monte Carlo until they formed nice crystalline structures. And this is some of the simulation results. Now, if we look at, for example, palladium-silver combination, palladium is the one occupying the core, and silver segregates to the surface. Some combinations are mixed, some look like core shell, and some are genus-like structures. At this point, we wanted to be more quantitative about these results instead of judging them by eyes. So to make a quantitative, quantitative analysis, and because we were interested in the surface degradation level or coercial preference, we used alpha shape method to identify the surface atoms. Using this method, we were able to count the number of each type of atoms on the surface. That is, how many A atoms are on the surface, and likewise, how many of B atoms on the surface, and also for the core. And once we've done the analysis for the MD result of each combination, we made our own criteria to characterize the structures. For example, when neither of the material occupies more than 70% of the surface, we labeled them as a combination that prefer a mixed structure. On the other hand, if one of the materials occupies more than 90% of the surface, it is labeled as a high level of core shell structure. So based on these criteria, each combination was categorized as either mixed, low level of core shell, high level of core shell, or genus-like. So what we did is that we converted the MD results into a table that shows the equilibrium structure of each combination and which metal segregates on the surface or forms the shell. Now, if we look at aluminum here, when it is combined with other materials, it tends to form the shell or the surface. On the other hand, platinum tends to occupy the core when it is mixed with other metals. So once we have these results, we investigated further to find the hidden trend, the rules that determine the segregation level for a given combination. So essentially, the question was, what makes a certain metal more core preferring and the other more surface preferring? There are some comprehensive work on this topic that inspired our work here. For example, global optimization technique was used to find the coercial preference, it showed that many different types of biometallic uh, structures are formed depending on the interaction energies. And there is also DFT studies where they found this sequence or the ordering of the metals that reflects how strongly a metal tends to occupy the core. But when we tabulated our MD results based on the sequence the order of metals provided by their work, it didn't fit the MD results, our MD results nicely enough. 
So we wanted to find a sequence or rules that are hidden in our empty results here. In order to do that, we firstly looked up the possible factors, the features of element that are frequently mentioned as the governing factors in coercial preference. For instance, cohesive energy, atomic radii, surface energy, electronegativity, enthalpy of mixing. We ended up considering a um, total of eight different features. And for each combination, we wrote down the relative difference in each feature. And we wanted to see which factors are the deciding factors in determining the final structures that we see in the MD results. And the easiest way would be to visualize the whole thing to see the relationship between the features and the MD results. But as we have many features, it was hard to visualize it. So what we did was that we used some data dimension reduction method, such as uh, the linear discriminant analysis, LDA. So using LDA, we could reduce the eight feature dimension into three dimension, but with minimal loss of original information. So here is the results of such analysis. It can be done quite easily using Python package, by the way. So here, each data point represents the each by metallic combination, and also they are color coded based on the um, equilibrium structure found by MD and Monte Carlo. We can see that the first axis explains the pattern quite well because here on the left side of the axis, we see more of mixed structures. And as we move to the other side of the axis, we see more of highly segregated structures like high coercial structures and genus-like structures. The method was quite good at separating the different types of structures. And if we look at this first axis and read what features are predominantly constituting this axis, we find that they are the cohesive energy difference and atomic radii difference. So essentially, the LDA analysis results shows that the deciding factors of the final structures we see in the MD results are the cohesive energy and atomic radii difference. The, general, the first general trend we see from the analysis agrees well with the previous studies that for a given combination, the material with larger cohesive energy and smaller atomic radius tends to occupy the core and the other occupies the surface. And it was true for the majority of the combinations that we studied that the element with larger cohesive energy usually has the smaller atomic radius. And the larger the relative difference in both features, the higher the segregation level. And we could also see how much roughly the relative differences should be for a combination to form highly segregated structures. But there were combinations that deviate from that majority. That is, in some combinations, the element with higher cohesive energy has also large atomic radius. So in that case, the core preference of that metal decreases. This trend was seen, for example, some of the combinations of molybdenum because it has unusually large atomic radius compared to its, lar its large cohesive energy. So we could update the old table by reordering this sequence based on the each material's cohesive energy and atomic radius. For example, Platinum is the most core preferring material among these metals we looked at. And this core preference of material decreases as we go up the table. And aluminum at the top is the most surface preferring material among these. The table is nicely sequenced because we can see by just looking at the color distribution that the highly segregated structures are formed at this corner and the mixed ones are at the diagonal. So in summary, I talked about the molecular dynamics Monte Carlo simulations and analysis method that we use to find the equilibrium bimetallic nanoparticle structures and how we used data dimension uh, reduction technique to find the pattern in the simulation results. 
and some general trends that we drew from that analysis. Thank you very much for your attention.